Hello, Villages Honor Flight, and Happy New Year. Welcome to 2021. We're certainly looking forward to a much better year than 2020. We're also hoping that we're going to be restarting our missions to Washington, D.C. As we always do, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we'll have a few moments of silence for those that have fallen. On our agenda today, we have a couple events. The first, again, we're honored to have our hub president, Rob Hempel. He'd like to address you and make a very informative presentation. So Rob, over to you. Thank you, Al. That was a nice presentation and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to all of our Honor Flight family. Um, we have finally 2020 in the rearview mirror. And like Joe Hambright, our chairman said the last time, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And um, let's all just hope that it's not a train, but it's actually daylight and we can get back to what we're doing best. And that's honoring our veterans with honor flights. Before I get into my programs on a local level, I'd like to just share with you some words that our national chairman, Bill Welser, had given to all of the uh, hubs throughout the nation. Um, presently, on our flight at the national level, they're working with some lawyers, they're working with some medical specialists, and what they're trying to do, and I'm sure they'll be successful at it, is to um, provide safety protocols that we can use as guidelines for when we build our own procedures for when we begin our flights in the fall. So there's a concerted effort at making flights in the fall possible. We will do it in a safe way because safety is always paramount every time. And I think that with this vaccine that is now a reality, um, we will more than likely be back to business in the fall. So that is really good news. There is one caveat to that, and this is coming from Bill. Um, we still have to hear from several of our key partners in DC, namely the National Park Police, um, because they still have not authorized any gathering permits in DC. The uh, Arlington National Cemetery, which still remains closed to the public because of the pandemic. And then also our partners that transport us with the buses. Um, we have to find out what, if any, guidelines they may have for us once we do go back to the flying business, as well as the partners that supply our lunches and our dinners. Um, I probably would think that there's going to be some changes. Um, however, we're very good at adapting to change, so I'm not looking at that as any kind of an issue. But it looks like uh, the fall will be when all of the nation returns to flying veterans to DC on their honor flight. So that is good news, and I'm happy to share that with you. And that, again, is from our chairman of the National Network, Bill Welser. Now here on a, nat on a local level, I'd like to talk about um, a few things. Um, our medical people led by Jeannie is working on um, protocols and procedures that we will be using once we go back to um, organizing and planning honor flights. One of those will be that everybody will have to have a vaccine. Um, that's just not negotiable. Uh, it's safety 
And um, it's just one of the things that will be prudent for everybody to do anyway, because nobody wants to catch the COVID. And now that we have a means to protect ourselves, I would expect everyone would do that. I can tell you from a personal basis right now that if you're planning to use the public health department here in Sumter County, you have to be early. They, they, uh, they put these um, blocks of time where you can sign up and register for a ticket that will get you a vaccine. But I was there this morning at eight o'clock pronto and no sooner did I click on the little taskbar to get registered and it was already sold out. So just word to the wise, you have to be there early. And even if you are, it's not guaranteed that you'll get one of the tickets. So I'll have to wait now at least more than three days because this ticket queue was for the next three coming days um, to get a reservation for that uh, vaccine. Um, if you have friends that are veterans, um, some who may be waiting on an honor flight, I also was speaking with the uh, Veterans Clinic over here in uh, Marion County for the villages. And while they haven't yet put a plan in action, they are organizing and planning one and you will be contacted by the VA if you are a veteran eligible for one of the uh, vaccinations. So that's um, something I think might be uh, worth sharing with any of your veterans um, so that they know um, how to go about getting a vaccine. This Tuesday, I'll be meeting with our vice presidents. Um, we're going to be discussing some big picture items about um, what we do in the fall and how we do it. Um, we currently right now still have 589 veterans waiting for an honor flight. Because of that, unless you're 80 and above, we can't put you on our waiting list. So we're going to be thinking outside the box at this meeting in hopes that maybe we can find ways to where we can get more veterans um, to DC in the limited window that we have. So stay tuned. Um, we will, of course, share all this with you once we agree on, on a path forward. I'm also hoping that soon the, uh, the recreational centers will return to normal. That won't happen, of course, until the vaccine is out there and everybody is um, vaccinated. But what I see as a promising thing is where we can all get back together again as a family, as an organization, and not only um, discuss honor flight business, but just the socializing that goes along with it. I, I miss that a lot, and I'm looking forward to that sometime in the, maybe the midsummer if everything goes well. So that's all I can share with you now. Um, just hang in there with us. Um, we're making baby steps forward. It won't be much longer to where we're all back together, and uh, we're doing what we enjoy best, and that's honoring our veterans. So thank you very much. And Al, I'm handing it back over to you. Thank you, Rob. That was great. A lot of really good information. So as you know, we have been acknowledging the various different uniform services. Today, we're doing number seven, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. Trying to find somebody from NOAA was, proved very difficult. So today, we are pleased to have a guest speaker today, the Deputy Club Coordinator, Bob Ciano. Bob, it's your turn. Hello, Honor Flight members. Today, I would like to give you a little information about NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. NOAA traces its history back to multiple agencies, some of which were among the oldest in the federal government. The United States Coast and Geodetic Survey was formed in 1807. The Weather Bureau of the United States formed in 1870. The Bureau of Commercial Fisheries 
was formed in 1871, and the Coast and Geodetic Survey Corps was formed in 1917. NOAA was established within the Department of Commerce via the Reorganization Plan Number 4 and formed on October 3rd, 1970, after U.S. President Richard Nixon proposed creating a new agency to serve a national need for better protection of life and property from natural disasters and hazards, for a better understanding of the total environment, and for exploration and development leading to the intelligent use of our marine resources. NOAA is currently a part of the Department of Commerce and in 2017 had over 11,000 civilian employees. Its research and operations are further supported by 321 uniformed service members who make up the NOAA Commission Corps. NOAA has three main missions. Number one, to understand and predict changes in climate, weather, oceans, and coasts. Number two, to share that knowledge and information with others. And three, to conserve and manage coastal and marine ecosystems and resources. NOAA works towards these missions through six major line offices, the National Environmental Satellite, the Data and Information Service, the National Marine Fisheries Service, the National Ocean Service, the National Weather Service, the Office of Oceanic and Atmospheric Research, and the Office of Marine and Aviation Operations. The Office of Marine and Aviation Operations has the largest research fleet of the federal government. Its personnel are made up of civilians and the NOAA Commission Corps. In addition, it has more than a dozen staff offices, including the Office of the Federal Coordinator for Meteorology, the NOAA Central Library, the Office of Program Planning and Integration. Each of these organizations have very interesting backgrounds and missions and I encourage, Lee, cur encourage you to investigate. Please watch this first video regarding an overview of NOAA. NOAA's work spans from the bottom of the sea to the surface of the sun. Each day, our employees take the pulse of the changing world around us and share that knowledge with others to ensure public safety, protect and restore marine resources, and strengthen our economy. Our people are as diverse as our mission. We are scientists, engineers, researchers, technicians, and more who live the mission every day. We are also the staff who support the mission behind the scenes. What I love about my job is that every day we get to see things that nobody has seen before or in ways that nobody has seen it before. NOAA's roots reach back more than 200 years. These agencies helped build the foundation of today's NOAA. You know, we, we constantly find new and creative, innovative ways to get our message of life-saving information to the public. Science is the foundation for all we do. As we conduct world-class research and use cutting-edge technology to explore our seas, forecast our weather, understand our climate, protect our coasts, manage our fisheries, and chart our waterways. It's the intangibles that matter more than anything else. It's not the paycheck. It's not the steady employment, it really is the science. You have a chance to be part of something bigger than just commercial organization, and that's what NOAA's about. Our work touches the lives of every American and powers the economy as we work in collaboration with our partners to transform our data and research into real-world applications that inform critical decision-making and protect the people, 
systems, and services essential to our nation. And liftoff. I love the mission. I love the work that we do, the people that are involved in this organization. We are united in our common mission. Science, service, stewardship. I hope you enjoyed that little introduction. The next video we have is NOAA One, which will further detail the operations of NOAA. NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, is the U.S. government's oldest scientific agency, with roots stretching back to the early 1800s. In 1970, these divisions came together to form one overarching agency, NOAA. Today, NOAA's work reaches from the bottom of the sea to the surface of the sun, and it touches every aspect of our daily lives. divide the ocean into many parts, Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic. But it's really just one big ocean. The same is true of NOAA. Together, the thousands of people who work at NOAA take the daily pulse of our ocean and our atmosphere. They join forces to save lives, safeguard property, and protect our environment. From weather to charting to fisheries, each unit is just one piece of a greater whole. Together, they make one NOAA. Thanks for watching. I hope that was informational to everyone. I'll hand it back to Al. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. That was a great presentation on NOAA, and those videos were fantastic. Well, Villagers Honor Flight, 
that's it for this month. We hope to see you next month and hope you're staying safe. Goodbye.